Okay, so here's the problem. Uh, lots of people in your organization need data, but they can't get it, generally because the data that they need is in a database and they don't know SQL. So um, at Paperless Post, we built an application to solve this problem that has completely transformed the way that we are able to give data to people who are non-technical. Like most companies, you know, this is a hard problem, and Paperless Post hasn't always done a good job solving it. Um, we had a hodgepodge of different tools that we had built and kind of cobbled together in order to get data to people, but it wasn't really working great. And here was our hodgepodge. We had a cron job with over a thousand queries every night that would run against a replica database and, and send emails to people, overwhelming them with data that they didn't care about. Meanwhile, the data that they needed, they couldn't get. Uh, we had these external GUI tools that weren't really effective because our database schema was a little too complicated to just drag and drop columns. We had developers running important but routine queries every month. Probably a lot of you do this. Just change the date, you know, put it into a CSV and send an email. And most importantly, people didn't ask for data because data was really difficult to get. So the non-technical people who we want to be making decisions using data weren't able to do that. And so we wanted to solve this problem. And there were two key insights from Rails that allowed us to build an application, which we just open sourced, uh, to solve this problem. The first was that Active Record can connect to any data store from any application. So if I define a class that inherits from Active Record base, I set that, I set abstract class equal to true, and I establish a connection. From, from any Rails app in the world, I can connect to any database and then run, run queries on that database. Next, another insight was that SQL queries are just text, and we can use ERB on them. So instead of thinking it as a very specific SQL query, we can think of it as a SQL template. And that opens up a huge, huge possibility for how people can actually use this data. So for example, when I write a query, I don't need to say, uh, I could say where created at equals go ruko date. And then next year, the person who's going to be running this just has to, has to change the go ruko date. They don't need to rewrite the entire query. This can allow for arbitrary inputs. So you, you write the same query, and people can run it for any start date or end date they want ever. Uh, you could have it for any name, any, any input like this. You could have optional inputs, so optional where clauses uh, to filter things when people want or not if they don't. And you can also write the same query and have it group by anything. So uh, this Postgres function can group by day, week, month, quarter, year. And you've taken the same data and opened up a whole new possibility for how you can, how you can deliver this data to, to non-technical people. And the beauty of this is it's all just one line of code that takes the SQL template and combines it with user inputable options and, and gives you a fully formed SQL string that you can then execute. So this gives incredible leverage. This is like the ideal situation because a developer only needs to write a query once. And then any person in the entire company can run that query anytime they want for any parameters that they want. So no more like calculating sales tax every month for last month for all the different states, which I used to do. OK, so, um, so we open sourced this. We, it's called BI. And you can find it on GitHub at paperless post slash BI. It's a Rails application. And it's split into four different sections. It's split into questions, KPIs, reports, and visualizations. Questions are like the, the workhorse of the app. So most people spend most of their time in questions. Uh, questions are these ad hoc SQL templates that get executed at runtime depending on whatever parameters people want to give it. So here's an example of a question, and this is for a campaign finance database. So how much money do politicians raise? So in here, you have your name, description. You can tag it with whatever you want. Um, and th there are two important, two important things to look at here. First is the data source. So the BI app can connect to multiple data sources. So if you have your production replica database, if you have a clickstream database, um, however many databases you have, it's, it's just a couple lines of configuration code, and you, you can query it from BI. You can also query uh, URL, HTTP, 
um, based, based data stores. So we hooked this up with Graphite, we're hooking it up with Mixpanel, Elasticsearch. All of these things are the same, are the same idea where you take, instead of a fixed URL, you can have a URL with inputable parameters that get interpreted at runtime. Um, so that's the data source. And then the, the next thing to look at is in the, in the query, you see the, the, the name, I like name. So anything you put inside those ERB tags will be shown to the user, and then the user can, can put in whatever they want. So on the next page, you can see what it looks like to the non-technical user who interacts with the application. It is as simple as can be. So you, 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 have, you put in John Boehner, and you want to see how much money he raised every election cycle, and you click Get Result, and, and here you go. That's the data. It just ran the query on your database. And if you want to download this into a CSV, it's one click. And there is someone in a, a newspaper organization that has run this query a thousand times for various reporters that, that want this data. And now you can just give that to everyone and let them use it easily. So it saves tons of time. Um, the next part of the application is KPIs. So KPIs are the kind of thing that you, you want to know every day. You want to track them every single day. And we, 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 we run queries against the database and store the results so that we can look at them easily. This is stuff like daily sales, daily new users, daily canceled users for paperless posts, stuff like, you know, how many cards do we send every day, uh, you know, how many events got created. Um, so it stores the results in the database in a very specific form. So today, percent change, seven day percent change, 30 day, quarter to date, year to date. And what this allows us to do, it is allows us to very quickly graph and uh, analyze trends about, about these very important metrics. Um, you know, right now, if it, you, you, any one of these headers on the graph is clickable, and you can see a graph of that. So if you wanted to see a seven-day rolling average of any metric from the beginning of the year till now, it's just a click away, and it's, it's, it's really easy to work with, this data. Uh, KPI queries are a little bit, uh, they have a very specific format, so it takes a little bit to get used to writing them, but they're not so bad once you get used to them. They, they're, all, they're all pretty much the same. And reports and visualizations are for when you want to do more complicated stuff. So they're just Ruby classes. Uh, the way we, 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 we divide them is the visualizations are like more dashboards. So, you know, live purchase map, if you want to see all the people that are buying stuff on the site, or like an interactive performance report, you know, we have that under visualizations. And then for reports, we have stuff like if you need to upload a file and connect to an external, KPI, external API, and you need to also have a start date and end date, then you can do that in a report. And this, that, that's way there's, that way there's nothing too complicated that you couldn't do in a SQL. Anything that's too complicated for a SQL query, you could do in a report. And it's just programming, so. <laughs> okay. And uh, lastly, deploying this. So um, it, there was a little bit of a rush to, to open source this before Goruko, so we shipped it without authentication. Paperless Post has a very specific authentication, but it, that'll, have, that'll be up in a week, so don't deploy this to production just yet. But Getting it on your laptop, up and running, connected to an external data source, if you already have a Ruby environment, will take you 10 minutes. It's, 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 it's as simple as can be. And you can use this, you know, normally when you try to deploy business intelligence infrastructure, it's a huge process. This is very easy. You can, you can, you can test this out, put it on your laptop, take it to people around your company and ask them, hey, are you interested in this? And uh, I can imagine that many people will be. Um, but if not, it, it, it costs almost nothing. It's 10 minutes. The time it takes to write one query, you can download this and uh, have it forever. And lastly, I just want to say that it's, it, you know, the people, that, the people that work in tech companies that are non-technical people aren't used to being treated sometimes as first-class citizens. Uh, or, so it's like, um, it's like when, you, when you take really, really good care of the people that are making really important decisions that affect everyone in your company, it, it makes a difference. And it's, it's made the relationship between the non-technical people and the technical people at Paperless Post, I think, even stronger. We, we, didn't, we never had a huge problem with it, but it's, it's just, it just it spreads a lot of good feelings around when you really take care of people that need it. So thank you very much. <laughs>